first insight a wataha marae. Now, last week, the Politic website, politic.co.nz, broke the story of a Labour Party scheme that had recruited 85 overseas students to campaign for the party and run into trouble. The trouble had two parts. First, to quote Politic, what was supposed to be a high-powered learning program, but which appears to be not much more than political campaign drudge work. That was a quote. And secondly, the accommodation. The students were staying in a marae on Auckland's North Shore, and some reportedly weren't happy about it. Awataha marae, which earns income by providing cheap and basic accommodation, found itself in the centre of a storm. Sweatshop marae, some called it. The students were described as slave labour and the conditions were called substandard. Some of the students left, few were talking on the record, but then, despite non-disclosure agreements, some popped up in the media describing themselves as much happier than the original complainants, but still no one had seen inside the marae. Where were the students staying? Today, Anthony Wilson, the marae's sometimes polarizing head showed cameraman Bradley White and me around. Hello, Kelly. Oh, Nice to see you. How are you? Good, good. Good. So, um, so as you can see, this is a, we're finishing up breakfast. Um, so, so, so without identifying them, these yeah. are some of the interns, right? Uh, this is some of the group that we're hosting at the moment. Um, and uh, as you can see, they're in all stages of um, just either waking up or just finishing have breakfast. Um, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Hello, my name is John Campbell and I work for Radio New Zealand. And we're not actually even filming you at the moment because that would be rude and an invasion of your privacy. But does anyone want to talk to me about their experience here? Is there anyone that feels you don't have to? I think it's just sticking with the uh, with the Mariah manager for today. Okay. Yeah. Who, who are you? Oh, I just um, I'm just involved in the Labour Party. Right, right, right. But I'm not. Uh, so, so, I, so I was just asking these people if they want to talk to me, and you immediately came in and and sort of closed me down. Why, why is that? Why are they allowed to? Are they allowed to talk if they want? Um, I'm not going to have an interview with you, John. Okay. Thanks very much. Right. So, the silence, the inability to talk then, is mm. that about the marae or is that about... Oh, no, definitely not. I mean, um, uh, while they may be under uh, requirement not to speak to media directly, uh, we aren't. I mean, this is our marae. I mean, I mean and, and we've thoroughly enjoyed having the group here. You know, minus all the political football stuff that's been going on, this is what we do day in, day out. If it's not for this group, it'll be for the next group that we've got coming in next week. So, so you've enjoyed it, but you found yourself in the middle of something much bigger than you, right? All sorts of conjecture. I've got some of the quotes. You've been called, you know, these kids have been called slave labour. This has effectively been described as a slum. The descriptions of the showers and the dorms, and I hope we're going to see those, have characterised the marae as... Substandard. As substandard, yeah, is and, it? And, of course it's not. And, and, you know, the way that we take that as a people is that we've been labelled with substandard. And we absolutely refute, refute that, uh, those comments and, um, you know, it actually hurts us. As a people, it hurts us because now we have to feel that we need to defend our mana, you know, because our, the pride in what we take in providing the meals that are here and the hospitality that we provide to people, I mean, that is what marae is all about, our manaakitanga. And you can see that they're not, is they're not unhappy and they've been... I, I'm so sorry that those people from the Labour Party wouldn't <laughs> let me talk to them because as, uh, as a person who, you know, knows young people, I have a couple <laughs> myself at home, they look pretty happy to me, yeah, but I, yeah. I, I, I'm not able to ask them that, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, well, it, it's unfortunate to us because... Um, you know, on, on your program, uh, we got to hear one of the students outing the story about, we've been treated great, you know, it's been fantastic here. And, you know, that was one of the messages that we wanted to have delivered out to the general public of New Zealand because it was kind of all one way that uh, this was, like you said, we've been labelled substandard. And we, we absolutely don't agree with that. Absolutely. Can you show me the dorms and the, and the famous showers and all of that kind of stuff? Come and have a look around and we'll, 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 we'll take you through and we can have a look. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you know, the first thing to say is that, you know, we're not a five-star hotel. We've never ever put ourselves out there being as a five-star hotel. And where's it, where are they sleeping? Where are the youngsters? Where have they been sleeping? Well, some of them are still asleep, so right. that's why I can't really take you over inside, because 
<laughs> you might end up. Isn't, the, isn't the whole point of this to show us the dorms? I mean, if, I, if I'm going, I'm just going to get out the thing from Politic. So if we look at what the first article in Politic where the story began, it says, Politic has seen photographs showing cramped dormitory alcoves, a broken and unusable shower, bathroom cupboard doors hanging off their hinges, mm. unfinished construction work material beside, piled beside mattresses. Yeah. Isn't it important we see those areas? Well, um, the first thing I need to clarify about the cramped dormitory conditions is that the way that marae work is that we all sleep next to one another. Absolutely. Yeah, and so we, we sleep on the floor and we all sleep next to one another. Now, when the organisers come to see us, um, they were wanting us to host 80 people. And we've had 80 people and more inside the Farinu before, but we, we all sleep next to one another. Uh, the organisers came up with an idea, and, and I think it's right in, 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 uh, in, in reflection that Everyone needs their own personal space. It's okay if we're doing it for one night, two night, maybe a weekend. But when you've got a long extended stay and these people are having to essentially live here for three months, yeah. then they need some personal space. So the organisers actually took it upon themselves to try and give them personal space. This is where we ran into... Putting in dividers and that yeah, kind of stuff? Yeah, putting in dividers to give them some, you know, because when you're changing in front of people, it's, it's you know, uh, just, just some decency, common decency. And it's also what led us to bring in the cabins. So I can show you the cabins that are outside. I mean, to our people, we don't usually get separated space. We ended up... But, that, but they're not here for three months, right? But it's they're not here for right. three months in, in, in the main. Because mains. my, my Marae experiences, and they've been magic and yeah. memorable, but they've been for a weekend or something. Yeah, right? that's right. And that's what, this is what we, we're dealing with here. It's a long extended stay. We've had to get other accommodation in because the, what we thought could fit uh, 80 people side by side turned it up. We could only fit 60, and then we had to get other accommodation in on site to cater for them. So this has been a bit of a sliding scale thing for us because um, as the program kind of, in, in our opinion, sort of got bigger and bigger and bigger, we were left hold with the responsibility of having to, um, you know, accommodate for the group expanding. This is our, the, the oh, children. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, though. No, thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank well, you. So, um, th th this is one of the um, kitchens. This is uh, the the interior kitchen. So. All the lunches, the breakfasts and everything are, uh, are made out of here. Uh, more functional than aesthetic. Um, it works really well. Uh, we've, we've fed tens of thousands of people through here, especially when our school group programs come through. There's, uh, the aunties make the fried bread. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot of activity on here at any one time, man. Yeah. So I'm now wandering up the stairs where Anthony is standing. But, um, as you can see here, fairly ru rudimentary, but uh, hardly, like there's one, two, three, four, five showers in here. How many showers are there? Uh, there's a total of eight. A lot, a lot of the conjecture has been about that we only had one shower here. In the it is rudimentary. I mean, there's it's no getting around no that, is yeah. there? Yeah, and we've, like I said to you before, we, we, we're not a five-star hotel. We never put ourselves out to be like... But, you know, we as Māori people are used to sort of conditions similar to this, if, if, if not sometimes maybe even less than this. And these are the cabins over here oh, to, yeah, 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 to our right camera left, yeah. Yeah. Walk yeah. down. I'm saying to you that having personal space is, is not really what we do. So this is a bit of an innovation from our point of view, being, being able to have um, personal space for people so that they can do whatever they want and for the long extended period be reasonably comfortable. You know. It looks to me very much like the kind of marae experiences I had at school <laughs> uh, with some extra cabins. Yeah, some extra cabins. Well, I guess the issue is that yeah. that is wonderful, the short-term accommodation. Yes. Are you in the business of providing long-term accommodation? Is it adequate for the long-term needs of young people who've come from all around the world to be here? Well, that's a really good question because we're, we're, we're trying to address that right now with our redevelopment plans. I mean, this has actually proven the point that we need to expand our facilities to include the opportunity to have not just international guests. The demand on our facilities is so great. We get netball teams, we get rugby teams that are always wanting to stay here. Now, a lot of them are looking for cheap accommodation, and Marae become very cheap accommodation for... Can, can I go back to how much a night? I just, can I push you on that? Oh, you, look, I, I can tell you how much some of the groups are paying. I can't tell you how much this group is paying. So how much are some of the groups paying? Uh, $12 a night. Per person? Per person. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can find a better deal than in Auckland. If you can, I, I'd be surprised. But $12 a night? Yeah. 
And, and I, I know I'm pushing you now, Anthony, but is that roughly what Labor have been paying you to host these interns? Uh, like I say, uh, um, we've been really reasonable with our deal that we had with them. So it's been cheaper than 12 bucks a night, hasn't it? Uh, I wouldn't like to say that. No. And I don't, I don't think um, it would be fair of me to actually tell you exactly what I'd pay because I'm trying to, I'm trying to protect the fact that these are people who come here in good faith, uh, entered into a contract with us uh, to provide this. So um, I don't think it's fair to sort of highlight that cost. One of the things I've noticed, because when, when you do this for a living, you notice how people are reacting around you, is all the young people are kind of taking off when they see us coming. Now, there's two reasons for that. Yeah. And one is that they don't want to be in the media. Yeah. And the other is that one way or another, they think that something is not fair. What do you say they are saying about the media coverage? Well, look, you know, we, we have our personal chats with some of the students. And I, I can tell you now, and I'm not making this up, a lot of them feel really sad for us because they know the hospitality that we've given. They know we've been drawn into this thing. They know it's a political issue rather than it is an issue of our making. And um, that's why some of the farewells have been so emotional, you know, because they, they feel that their coming here has actually helped cause part of this controversy. And we don't accept that. And we also don't accept that it has anything to do with us per se. Um, and so for a lot of them, it is the unfortunate part of their experience here, but it doesn't sum up the whole part of their experience of having been here in Aotearoa New Zealand. Anthony Wilson, the Marae head now, that's what he says the students are saying. It seems ridiculous for us to go to the Marae and not talk to students. So despite instructions to the contrary, we found some who were happy to talk to us and we will play those conversations after six.